The Egyptian Sphinx stands as one of history's most renowned sculptures, but the mysteries veiling it are more intriguing than you might think. Beyond its fame lies a wealth of discoveries waiting to be unraveled. Join us as we explore 15 strangest mysteries of the ancient Egyptian Sphinx. Number 15, carved from limestone. When it comes to the mighty Sphinx, it's easy to raise an eyebrow at the incredible claim that this colossal creation emerged from a single chunk of rock. Yet, astonishingly, this towering monument, standing as a testament to ancient ingenuity, was indeed hewn from a solitary block of limestone. Imagine a team of potentially hundreds of workers with chisels and determination, meticulously sculpting away until the 240-foot-long, 66-foot-tall figure we now know comes into being. However, before we start envisioning this Sphinx as an unaltered masterpiece, a minor twist in the narrative emerges. The present-day Sphinx, while still an awe-inspiring wonder, has undergone its fair share of repairs and partial restorations involving the integration of limestone blocks. Consequently, its original form might have deviated slightly from the one we gaze upon today. Contemplating the sheer magnitude of such an artistic construction project, one can't help but marvel at the enormity of the endeavor. Even in in our modern era, this scale of undertaking would leave contemporary building and design companies daunted. Imagine then the audacity of the ancient Egyptians, who, armed with nothing more than rudimentary hand tools, embarked on this monumental mission eons ago. It's a notion that undeniably leaves us staggered and maybe just a tad envious of their unyielding determination. Ironically, the architect behind this astonishing creation remains shrouded in mystery. Unlike many other monumental sculptures and structures of ancient Egypt, Egypt, the Sphinx bears no inscriptions that divulge the identities of those responsible for its conception and construction. This curious absence of markings only deepens the enigma surrounding its origin and the individuals who brought it into existence. Perhaps this air of craftsmanship is what has fueled some to entertain the fanciful notion that extraterrestrial hands might have played a role in crafting this majestic figure. While such theories might provide a playful diversion, the truth remains rooted in the remarkable capabilities of humanity armed with their primitive tools and boundless imagination. As we ponder the Sphinx's timeless gaze, we're reminded that the whispers of history often hide more awe-inspiring stories than we could ever imagine. Number 14. A monument shrouded in mystery and lost history. As we delve further into the realm of the Sphinx, a glaring absence beckons us to inquire, who was behind this incredible feat of ancient craftsmanship? Let's momentarily put aside the playful Anubis theory and consider the hypothesis that it symbolizes the likeness of King Khafra. If this is the case, then the colossal figure must have emerged sometime between the years 2558 and 2532 BCE. Yet, in an ironic twist, the pages of history offer us no definitive confirmation of this time frame. Intriguingly, the annals of historical scholarship don't echo in harmonious accord when it comes to the who, the why, and the original intention behind the Sphinx's creation. This conspicuous gap in knowledge stands as a testament to the profound mystery encasing one of the planet's largest sculptures, a monument that stands as a testament to the artistic prowess of the ancient world, as well as the oldest known monumental sculpture in Egypt. Number 13 unraveling the hidden tunnels and chambers. Embarking on our journey into the realm of Sphinx mysteries, let's first venture into the intriguing theory that has tantalized curious minds for years. The existence of a concealed passage or tunnel lurking beneath the Sphinx, leading to enigmatic underground chambers. A concept that, despite its allure, has yet to find its empirical vindication. Meet historian Matt Simpson, a bold thinker who believes that the colossal guardian harbors subterranean secrets. Simpson's premise paints a picture of hidden tunnels crisscrossing beneath the Sphinx's colossal paws, ingeniously connecting this regal sentinel to the pyramids of Giza. His conviction stems from a remarkable account dating back to 1837, where a French archaeological expedition allegedly stumbled upon a covert entrance. This clandestine discovery, as per Simpson's theory, unfolded before the watchful eyes of none other than Egyptologist Colonel Howard Weiss. Intriguingly, the narrative takes an unexpected twist. Both the excavation team and the colonel 
Colonel, as if bound by an unspoken pact, chose to shroud this revelation in secrecy. While Simpson's notion initially seemed too fanciful to entertain, the tides shifted in 2019. A new discovery, the unearthing of concealed tunnels beneath the Giza Plateau, breathed fresh life into the theory. Suddenly, the concept of enigmatic passageways beneath this ancient landscape didn't appear quite so far-fetched. If indeed these hidden tunnels exist beneath the Sphinx, one can't help but ponder their destination. The tantalizing notion of a clandestine connection between the regal Sphinx and the magnificent pyramids of Giza beckons our imagination. Could these subterranean labyrinths have served a purpose beyond the scope of our understanding? Yet, as the pieces of this puzzle fall into place, one enigma remains unresolved. The perplexing question of why both the French archaeologists and the esteemed colonel were seemingly compelled to maintain a veil of silence around their remarkable discovery. Given the potential historical significance of this revelation, the instinct to share such a find with the world seems intuitive. Why, then, this shroud of secrecy? Number 12. Unraveling the Mystery of Its Weathered Nose Diving deeper into the mystique of the Sphinx, another captivating notion surfaces the gradual erosion of its once stalwart nose, washed away by the persistent touch of water. Yet this revelation introduces an even more astonishing twist, one that challenges our understanding of time itself. Imagine through meticulous analysis of the effects of water erosion on the Sphinx's visage, whispers arise that this majestic guardian might be far older than our historical narrative currently permits. Enter geologist Robert Schock, a visionary in his own right. He postulates that the telltale signs of erosion etched into the Sphinx's flanks speak of millennia-long exposure to rainfall. Herein lies the conundrum. Consistent rain has eluded this Egyptian region for over seven millennia. Shok's geological assessment casts an audacious shadow over our existing understanding. He proposes that an age of approximately 12,000 years aligns more accurately with the extent of the erosion observed. Such a proposition, if validated, stands as a monument mental divergence from the timeline we've come to accept. It's a concept that dares to unravel the very tapestry of Egyptian history, unfurling revelations that are, for now, almost too astonishing to grasp. Among Shaka's peers, vehement opposition to his hypothesis has arisen, branding him a maverick, a lone thinker on the fringe. Despite the division, one undeniable truth remains, the evidence of water-induced erosion gracing the Sphinx's form. This fact alone casts shadows of uncertainty over conventional theories, leaving us to ponder the unresolved enigmas that conventional history is yet to elucidate. Number 11. Strange Changes to Its Puzzling Face in our journey through the enigma of the Sphinx, a question previously brushed upon now comes into sharp focus, warranting the consideration it rightfully deserves. Is the Sphinx's head missing vital components? To be precise, did it once boast a complete forehead profile and an upper skull, or as some intriguing posit, a majestic chin beard? While the nose's absence captures much of the spotlight, let's not sidestep the wider context of its countenance. A closer inspection reveals a visage bearing more than just the ravages of time. Beyond the obvious damage, it's undeniable that the rest of the face has also suffered its fair share of wear and tear. Granted, surviving the desert elements for over four and a half millennia is bound to leave its marks, but not all the alterations to this monumental countenance can be attributed to the passage of natural forces. Herein lies the crux, deliberate disfigurement or strategic redesigning. The intriguing possibility emerges that the visage we contemplate today might not be the one originally crafted. And this brings us to a pivotal observation. The dimensions simply don't add up. The Sphinx's head appears disproportionately smaller in relation to its colossal body, a stark departure from the meticulous proportionality that characterized ancient Egyptian artistry. In a society known for being extremely precise, this odd change needs an explanation. Could it be that the head we're looking at isn't the original? This brings up the curious Anubis theory. Or perhaps the face was carved and modified multiple times, leaving us wondering why these efforts were made. Number 10. The Sphinx's Beard Earlier, we hinted at the notion of a beard gracing the Sphinx's countenance, and now we unveil a more certain truth. In this case, it's not merely a possibility, but a well-established fact, substantiated by a tangible relic. A substantial portion of the Sphinx's beard finds its residence within the esteemed collection of the British Museum. However, this artifact's journey is a reminder of the intricate dance between historical narratives and tangible remnants. Allow us to set the stage. The British Museum, a treasure trove of ancient Egyptian relics, is 
is home to the Sphinx's beard fragment, yet a twinge of candor prompts us to admit that the artifact's presence there raises eyebrows. The annals of history dictate that this once-attached beard was, according to official accounts, discovered in fragments between the Sphinx's paws during the 19th century, a narrative seemingly straightforward, yet laden with incongruities. Herein lies the paradox. As we've previously explored, the Sphinx's paws remained concealed beneath sands until the 1,000 930s, casting a shadow of doubt over the widely accepted chronicle. While there are accounts suggesting an attempt by Caviglia to delve deeper into the Sphinx's mysteries, the fog of history obscures the exact events that transpired. What emerges is a fascinating duality. The Sphinx's beard, once an integral part of its regal aura, now finds itself fragmented both physically and metaphorically, a relic residing far from the desert sands that birthed it. Yet, in a testament to the enduring spirit of of curiosity and restoration, a movement in Egypt has taken root. A campaign seeks to mend the fractures of history and attachment alike, advocating for the reassembly and reattachment of the Sphinx's beard to its rightful place. Number 9. Its Buried Past and Mysteries in the past, an interesting part of the Sphinx's history has caught our attention. It was hidden for a long time under sand. This unusual fact challenges some well-known stories, like the idea that Napoleon broke the Sphinx's nose. Let's travel back to the 18th century when the Sphinx was hidden from sight. During this time, the big statue was covered by Egyptian sand, making it hard to see. The idea that Napoleon damaged the Sphinx's nose is proven wrong because he couldn't have done it. He wouldn't even have been able to see it. The statue stayed hidden until 1790 which disproves that theory. The Sphinx's emergence from its sandy cocoon commenced with the gradual unveiling of its crown, a process set in motion by nature's hand. It wasn't until the 1920s that the intrepid French engineer, Émile Barr, took up the monumental task of excavating this buried treasure. A decade of toil culminated in 1936 when the Sphinx stood exposed to the gaze of modern eyes for the very first time in nearly 150 years. However, the Sphinx's concealed existence wasn't merely a consequence of time's passage, it was deliberate, orchestrated by unseen hands. The notion that this grand sentinel could be swallowed by the very sand it overlooked is as preposterous as suggesting the pyramids might be engulfed. Such a profound burial wasn't happenstance but a conscious endeavor, shrouding the Sphinx's form and intentions in an impenetrable mystery. In the years preceding its rebirth, notable figures like the Italian explorer Giovanni Caviglia and the French archaeologist Auguste Mariette undertook the ambitious quest to unearth the Sphinx's secrets. Both, however, were forced to yield to the colossal scale of the undertaking. This historical episode underscores the enormity of the effort required to reveal a hidden marvel entrenched in the Egyptian desert. Number 8. Timeless Riddles Beyond Full Comprehension As we journey through the mysteries of the Sphinx, a singular truth emerges, casting shadows upon what we believed to be known. The Sphinx, despite its iconic stature, shrouds its origins in the veils of time, revealing only snippets of its enigmatic past. Amid the myriad revelations, one profound takeaway comes to light, the elusive quest to pin down its age. The Sphinx's age, akin to sand grains slipping through our fingers, defies precise quantification. The whispers of its antiquity beckon us, hinting that its existence might precede even the mighty pyramids it oversees. The narrative oscillates between the notion that it could have been created for Pharaoh Khafre around 2600 BCE, and the audacious possibility that it's a relic from an era preceding the established context tours of Egyptian civilization. The telltale marks of erosion etched upon its limestone form spark intrigue, prompting divergent considerations about its birth date. While discussing ages extending to 9,000 years or more might reshape the very narrative of ancient Egypt, the underlying question echoes, who then were the architects of this colossal marvel? It compels us to question not aliens, as some would whimsically postulate, but rather the enigmatic civilizations that might have graced the land prior to the Egyptians. Yet, the puzzle doesn't conclude with age. It extends to purpose. The Sphinx's imposing presence raises the inevitable query. Why? Was it a towering homage to Pharaoh Khafre? An embodiment of his ego and power? Or could it have been an artifact conceived to pay homage to Anubis, the ancient deity? The very form of the Sphinx carries within it a metamorphosis, a head that seems mismatched, a visage that has undergone alteration. These conundrums prod us to ponder not only the what, but the why. Was it a monument of spiritual 
spiritual reverence, a protector of sacred lands, or simply an awe-inspiring symbol of temporal might. The silence of history deepens the mystery. A monument of this magnitude, forged in an age known for meticulous record-keeping, emerges from the shadows without a name, without a tale of its genesis. Its existence eludes inked chronicles, leaving us to wonder if its builders purposefully wove a veil of mystery around it. Number 7. Unraveling Anubis, the Nebulous Guardian Venturing once more into the realm of intriguing conjectures, we find ourselves confronting a captivating notion. Could the Sphinx be an embodiment of Anubis, the dog-headed deity, rather than a mere pharaoh's likeness? As archaeological narratives continue to engage in a dance of contrasts, this speculation weaves yet another thread of intrigue into the tapestry of the Sphinx's enigma. While conventional thought aligns the Sphinx's visage with Pharaoh Khafra's likeness, dissenting voices rise. Among them, a persuasive hypothesis unfurls that the Sphinx could have been fashioned to pay homage to Anubis, the revered god with the head of a canine. A discordant note to the Kafra narrative, this alternative theory invites us to reconsider the essence of this iconic figure. Draw your gaze once more to the Sphinx's silhouette, a flat back, legs arranged in a manner reminiscent of a dog's stance. The uncanny semblance beckons us to contemplate whether this regal guardian is indeed an homage to Anubis, the loyal protector of the necropolis. As a god intimately associated with the realms of the dead, Anubis's watchful presence would align seamlessly with the Giza Plateau's purported necropolis status. Could it be that over time, the Sphinx's countenance underwent a profound transformation, altering the representation of Anubis into the visage of Pharaoh Khafra, as history suggests? It's a notion that defies conventional interpretation, and yet history often thrives on the unpredictability of human agency. In the shadows of history, the Sphinx emerges not just as an architectural marvel, but as a vessel of cultural echoes, a sentinel gazing across the expanse of time, perhaps holding within its stony demeanor the essence of Anubis, guardian of the afterlife. The Sphinx, with its juxtaposition of form and intention, invites us to traverse beyond the boundaries of the known, to consider not just the visible, but the profound. Number six, the Sphinx's lost nose. In the tale of the Sphinx, a question shrouded in whispers and uncertainty stands prominently, the mysterious fate of its nose. Often portrayed as a casualty of war, the prevailing narrative asserts that the French forces under Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte broke the nose during their Egyptian campaign in 1798. Yet the journey to uncover the truth unveils a path fraught with ambiguity and enigma. The tale of Napoleon's military escapades, though popularized, lacks the crux of direct evidence. Witness accounts fade into a obscurity, and historical nuances challenge the veracity of this oft-repeated tale. In the echoes of history, a different voice emerges, resonating from the chronicles of Arabian historian Omakrasi. According to his narrative, the Sphinx's nose vanished long before Napoleon's era, disappearing perhaps as early as the 15th century. Omakrasi's account attributes the disfigurement to a Fatimid sheikh named Muhammad Siam Eldar. Yet even this assertion remains cloaked in uncertainty, devoid of irrefutable proof. However, treading the realm of controversy, we stumble upon a theory that ignites passionate debates, a proposition that challenges the standard narrative, asserting that the Sphinx's nose held a form divergent from the one depicted today. This theory suggests that the missing nose bore a classically African appearance, a detail that could reshape perceptions of the ancient Egyptians' racial identity. Controversial and unverified, this notion dares to question the motives behind potential historical alterations. The mystery grows as time and interpretation mixed together. As we think about the Sphinx's incomplete face, we face not just a missing part, but a puzzle that shows us the unclear reasons of the past. The Sphinx's nose, a carved detail in the discussion, shows how history can change and the lingering questions we have. As we try to understand, we remember that the Sphinx's mysteries don't only belong to the past, but also affect how we see things today. Now it's time for today's subscriber's pick. Hey, curious minds, feast your eyes on the one and only Great Sphinx. Yes, you read that right. Someone out there decided it's totally normal to take a leisurely stroll on this ancient masterpiece. Now let's talk about the secrets hidden beneath those massive paws. But here's the twist. How on earth did this daring adventurer manage to get up there? Oh, hold on a second. Since there's a secret tunnel, there's got to be a secret entrance, right? Let us know your thoughts about these mysteries in the comments below. Number 5. Decoding the Mystery Behind Its Shut Eyes 
In the realm of modern observation, a perplexing phenomenon has stirred whispers of wonder and intrigue. The notion that the Sphinx's watchful eyes have, in recent photographs, seemingly closed. This captivating imagery, circulating since 2022, has ignited both curiosity and alarm, hinting at a mystery that defies the logic of its long-standing vigilant visage. Imagine, if you will, a monument that has met the world with open eyes since its emergence from the sands of the 1930s. And yet, the visuals capture the Sphinx with closed eyes have prompted a torrent of speculation. A flurry of images, often shared across social media, portrays the monumental guardian in a slumberous repose, an unprecedented sight that has baffled and intrigued observers. Some even turn to the realm of prophecy, declaring it a herald of apocalypse. Yet, within this labyrinth of paradoxes, a simple, rational explanation emerges, unraveled by the threads of skepticism. Consider the angles of observation, a key facet in comprehending this apparent conundrum. The images capturing the Sphinx's eyes shut in reality might stem from a specific vantage point, inducing an optical illusion that beguiles perception. Another avenue unfolds, that of digital manipulation, where tools of editing shape reality's contours. As images from disparate perspectives circulate, the notion of Photoshop weaving this illusion gains credibility. Rest assured, amidst the currents of speculation, the Sphinx's eyes remain wide open. Thousands have gazed upon its towering form, capturing its eternal vigilance through their lenses. As we navigate through the realm of the Sphinx's mystique, one thing becomes abundantly clear. In the digital age, illusions can be both intriguing and misleading, showcasing the fine line between what we perceive and what actually exists. The Sphinx's unwavering gaze still cuts through time's layers, showing us that even in our tech-driven era, mysteries endure, and understanding is crucial. The Sphinx's puzzle, its stories and complexities, keep captivating us, making us admire how our view of truth and reality can be uncertain. Number four, the Sphinx's real name. Adding to the enigma is the baffling reality that the Sphinx remains nameless in the written records of ancient Egypt. It's as if this majestic entity existed beyond the pages of their meticulously kept chronicles. It wasn't until the New Kingdom era that it gained the moniker Horamaket, yet historical detectives remain skeptical that this was its original designation. Remarkably, the title Sphinx as we know it today didn't grace the lips of humanity until a mere two millennia ago. Consider this, a civilization renowned for its meticulous record-keeping, an empire that etched its achievements and stories onto the very fabric of existence, has left us bereft of any substantive accounts regarding the construction of the Sphinx or the christening of this monumental artifact. This conspicuous silence raises not just eyebrows, but rather a cacophony of questions. Could it be that the records were deliberately erased or lost to the annals of time? If so, what could have been the motivations behind such erasure? The Sphinx, standing silent and resolute in the face of these unanswered questions, becomes not just a physical presence, but a metaphor for the enigma of the past. Its gaze, a timeless sentinel of mysteries, beckons us to ponder the depths of history's hidden recesses. While we may never fully unveil the secrets it guards, the very act of wondering unveils the scope of our fascination and the tantalizing allure of the unknown. Number three, the Sphinx and the pyramids are precisely aligned with the patterns of the constellations. The monuments at Giza have been meticulously designed to align precisely with specific stars within the Orion Belt constellation. However, experts remain perplexed about the methods employed to achieve this alignment, leading to significant debates. One theory regarding the purpose behind constructing the pyramids in this particular manner revolves around the idea that the stars themselves played a role in the reasons for their construction. It's speculated that there might be a connection between the stars and the motivation behind building the pyramids. Perhaps whoever was involved in this endeavor intended for the pyramids pyramids to point precisely to these stars for a specific purpose. As of now, the mystery persists, but there remains hope that one day we might uncover the truth behind this enigmatic alignment. One intriguing aspect of pyramid construction that captivates discussions is the exceptional precision employed in the process. These pyramids are not haphazardly assembled. Instead, the Egyptians meticulously ensured every element was perfectly in place. Take the pyramids of Giza, for instance. They are astonishingly aligned with the four cardinal directions, so much so that if you were at the pyramids, you could accurately determine north, south, east, and west. However, a crucial point to note is that these cardinal directions didn't correspond exactly to our modern concept of them. So how did they achieve such precise alignment? In essence, they looked to the stars. It's
It's believed that the ancient Egyptians utilized the fall equinox as a guide to achieving near-perfect alignment with the cardinal directions. A comprehensive test was even conducted to verify whether this equinox could feasibly allow for such precise placement. Surprisingly, it was found to be a viable method. Given that the equinox remains a universal constant and would have been consistent in ancient times, it's plausible that the Egyptians harnessed its predictability for their construction endeavors. Though this theory shows promise, it's important to acknowledge that definitive proof remains elusive. While all three pyramids are aligned in the same manner, confirming this method conclusively is challenging. Number 2. Who did the hard labor? Another significant challenge in understanding how the ancient Egyptians constructed the pyramids stems from the multitude of myths and legends that have emerged over time, lacking logical reasoning or substantial evidence. A long-standing example of this is the myth suggesting that the pyramids of Giza were built predominantly by slave labor. While it's true that slavery was present in ancient Egypt, the question of whether slaves were the primary force behind pyramid construction has been fiercely debated for decades. One compelling piece of evidence that that contradicts the slave labor theory arises from the tombs of the construction workers. These tombs, discovered as modest, nine-foot-deep shafts, contained the well-preserved remains of pyramid builders. Alongside these skeletons were containers of beer and bread, offerings for the afterlife. Consider this. If these individuals were indeed slaves subjected to harsh treatment by the ancient Egyptians, why were they interred with such precision and equipped for the journey beyond? In Egyptian culture, the careful preservation of burials was crucial to ensure a safe transition to the afterlife. While they weren't mummified, indicating a lower status, there was evident care taken in their burial and preservation practices. It's important to note that constructing the pyramids was undoubtedly an arduous task. Newer theories propose a different perspective, suggesting that workers were cycled in overtime and fairly compensated for their efforts. However, the truth remains elusive and certainty continues to evade us. Number one, Sphinx Sphinx was employed to harness the energy of the sun. While it might sound unusual, there were actual individuals, including the notable scientist Nikola Tesla, who explored the notion of the Sphinx and pyramids as potential scientific breakthroughs. Tesla seriously contemplated their significance, delving into investigations throughout his lifetime. Given his extensive body of work and groundbreaking ideas before his unfortunate passing, one can't help but ponder the potential insights he discerned from these structures. In 1905, Tesla submitted a patent application in the United States titled The Art of Transmitting Electrical Energy Through the Natural Medium. This patent outlined his concepts for a series of generators distributed globally, aiming to harness energy from the ionosphere. Curiously, there's a connection to Egypt and its pyramids here. Tesla's designs bore resemblance to the pyramids' structures. Moreover, he believed that the placement of the Egyptian pyramids was purposeful, which aligns with what we already know to be partly true, as mentioned earlier. Inspired by this belief, Tesla endeavored to construct his own towers and pyramid-like structures in alignment with what he perceived as the guiding positions of the Egyptian pyramids. Although he didn't realize this ambition, the outcome he sought would have revolutionized energy transmission. Tesla's aspiration was to achieve wireless energy transmission, a goal he tirelessly pursued throughout his lifetime. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.